In this video, I will teach you the PowerPoint Animations tab and ribbon in depth. And this is one in a series of videos that teaches you each of the PowerPoint tabs and ribbons. Let's get started. In this video, we're focused on animations, and these are similar in some ways to transitions, but transitions kind of animate the transition between one slide and the next, whereas animations are more about moving and animating individual elements of a particular slide. So here I am on slide two that's all about airplanes in Spanish, and I would like like to animate these. Now these two happen to be 3D models and they can be clicked and dragged to get different angles. If you want to learn more about that, watch my video on 3D models in PowerPoint. And this one is already kind of animated. It's basically a video in addition to being a 3D object. But I want to animate this even further. So I'm going to click on this airplane and notice here on the animations tab and ribbon in the animations group, I have several options. I could choose to have no animation at all for this airplane, and that actually removed the movement that existed there. I could change to scene two instead of scene one, and these are built-in scenes that come with the 3D object. I could go to scene three. It's kind of small, so I've zoomed in so you can see it a little better, but each of these scenes shows some pre-created animation that comes with this 3D object. I'm going to go back to scene one, select the airplane again, to point out that there are other animations that don't have anything to do with these predetermined scenes. So I'm going to click Arrive, and this applies an Arrive animation. You probably noticed the airplane kind of scoots into the slide. You could also alternatively give it a turntable animation, where it just rotates gradually. You could choose to make it swing. You could choose to have it jump and turn. Now some of these options are specific to Microsoft 365 versions of PowerPoint, but don't be too disappointed if you don't have all of these bells and whistles. There are some more basic animations that you'll definitely use probably more often. We also have the leave animation, and that's a good one. Now each of these that you choose, let's say the turntable animation, for example, can be customized using this button here, Effect Options. So right now, it's going to turn to the right, but I could change it to turn up or clockwise or down. There are lots of different effect options that I could choose from. Now let's click on this other airplane. This airplane is not a 3D object, so notice that the animations that I'm getting are different. I get a little bit simpler options, and that's fine. I have appear, I have fade, this will just slowly fade in the airplane. I have fly in, this might be appropriate for an airplane, or float in, we have split, we have wipe, all sorts of options. If I click here, I get even more, including things like shrink and turn. Let's look at that one. And then I also get lines, arcs, and turns, and also shapes. You'll find those again by clicking on the button to see all the possible options. You can use these to make a visual element in your slide move in a certain predetermined way, in an arc, in a line, in a turn, a shape, a loop, one of my favorites is custom path. So I want this airplane to go from point A to point B and then to point C. This airplane can fly backwards, I guess, and it's just gonna follow this path. When you're done outlining the path, just tap escape on the keyboard and the path is determined and set. Now, if these animation effects aren't enough for you, you can definitely click here to get even more entrance effects, even more emphasis effects, exit effects, motion paths. There are really many, many options that you can choose from and experiment with. Now, as you're using animations in PowerPoint and setting up maybe custom paths or motion paths, anytime you want to preview the effect that you're creating, you can just click here on preview. You can click the top of the button to just see it in action, or you could go to the bottom part of the button to either preview it or auto preview it. So here's just regular preview.
preview. If you leave auto preview checked, what will happen is as soon as you apply an animation, you'll see an automatic preview of what it will look like. I do recommend that. I think it's a good option. Okay, I'm going to click here on my fourth slide, El Autobus, and here I'm going to click on the bus. I could apply one of these nice animations that we looked at earlier, but instead I'm just going to click here this time in the Advanced Animation group. I'll click on Add Animation. This is another way to get some of these same animation options and also the motion paths. So it's really just another route to get to these options. But there are some nice other features in the advanced animation group. For example, if you click here, you get an animation pane. If you are going to use a lot of different complicated animations on a particular slide, it's a really good idea to turn on the animation pane, and you'll see why in just a minute. In fact, I'm going to click and drag to stretch out this animation pane so that it has more room. And I'm going to click here on the bus and add an animation. I'll just have it kind of fly in. And I want it to fly in not from the bottom, but from the right. I like that effect. Next, if I want to, I can set up a trigger. And this could be that on the click of a certain picture or a star or whatever it might be, something special would happen. So on click of picture 70, then the bus would fly in. I'd have to figure out what picture 70 is. But you get the idea. You can set up some animations that are triggered by certain things that the viewer clicks on or does. So that's an exciting option. Now, what if I want to take the animation that I've applied to this bus and I want to apply it to the text. Is that possible? It is. I would just click on the bus. I would go to Animation Painter and click, and then whatever I click on next will take on the animation properties of the original item that I selected. Isn't that cool? So now that I have two different animations on this slide, notice the animation pane. It's helping to organize those animations for me so that I don't get confused or lose track of what I'm doing. So I'm going to now add another animation to this bus. I want it to appear in a wheel effect like that. Okay, so it's added to my animation pane. And I could even add a third animation if I want to. I could animate the bus if I want to. And all of those changes are tracked in the animation pane. Also in the animation pane, I can reorder which animation takes place first. So that's important. I can also select on a particular animation and then go up here to the timing group to decide how is that animation activated. By default, it's often activated on click, either of a presenter remote or the mouse, or it could be spacebar or the right and left arrow keys on the keyboard. So that's a great option. That's typical. Or you could say, I want this animation to happen with the previous animation. Okay, so now if I go to the next animation and say not on click but with previous or after previous, it would look back to this first animation and say, okay, when that first animation happens, I want the second animation to also happen. If I preview this, you'll see what happens. They both happen simultaneously. Sometimes you want to have one of the animations happen after the previous animation, so let's try that out. I'll click preview. There's the first, there's the second. One right after the other immediately. Immediately. So that's nice, but sometimes you don't want it actually immediately after. You want to give it a little bit of a delay. That's okay. You could do that. You can also decide how long it takes for the animation to take place. So these are two timing options that really make a big difference. How long does it take for the animation to happen? And is there a delay built in between the two animations? So let's try it out. I'll click preview. There's the first, and then there's a little bit of a delay, and then I get the second animation on this slide. Okay, I've already shown you how to reorder order your animations, but there's also a tool here that you can use, move earlier, move later, so if you prefer not to click and drag, that's what this is for. It's also what these two buttons are for. So at this point, if I want to try the whole slideshow and see all of the animations that I've put onto this presentation, it's going to look kind of crazy with all of these different animations, but let's try it out. I'll go to the slideshow tab, click from the beginning, there's the title slide, there's my animations, and then I advance and this lady will now follow the custom motion path and there's my autobus and the text. So if you put some real thought and care into the animations that you put into Microsoft PowerPoint, you can create some really neat effective animations.
Thanks for watching. Remember that this is just one in a series of videos, so please watch the other videos on the PowerPoint tabs and ribbons. In the meantime, I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider becoming a channel member or clicking the thanks button or supporting me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.